be ready to throw in the towel because we're facing one issue. The, the Bible says that Jesus overcome the world. He said, be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. And no temptation that has been set before us that Jesus had not went through. So we got to make sure that we just don't be so quick to throw in the towel. This woman suffered the same issue for 12 years. She endured. She had patience. Okay, in verse 27 says, and when she had heard of Jesus, came in, then pressed behind and touched his garment. Verse 28, for she said, if I may touch but the hem of his clothes, I shall be made whole. So she had faith. She wasn't just sitting back idle. She had faith and she believed in God. She believed if she pressed through and touched but the hem of his garment, she'll be made whole. And that's how we need to be. We can't wait for somebody to lay hands on us. we got to say, Lord, if I just get in my prayer closet, if I could just tap into your word, if I could just get into the house of the Lord, I could be made whole for any infirmity or any ailment that ails me. You could be made whole for that situation. Amen. But you got to believe. A lot of times as Christians, when we worry about things, worrying don't do nothing. Worrying just, just going to amplify the problem. What are worrying going to do? Worrying has never changed nothing. When you worry about the problem, the problem is still going to be there. So that's why the Bible says don't worry. We, got, we, 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 we cast our cares upon God, for God cares for us. When you worry, you're not going to be able to be effective. So it says, for she, for she said, if I may touch but, they, but his clothes, I shall be made whole. In verse 29 it says, the straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that very plague. So she said when she touched the hem of his garment, she knew that she was going to be made healed. And I thought someone's got to be, if I could just get to my prayer closet, if I could just spend a little time with my father, I know any condition, any circumstance in my life I've been facing, I'm going to be healed for that very thing. But a lot of times, that's why the Bible tells us not to sin. Sin makes cows a man. When we sin and we, when we do things we're not supposed to do, when we go to God in prayer, we are already defeated because we feel like God ain't hearing our prayer. I know for me, when I sin, when I go pray, I feel like God not answering my prayer. That's why God says when, when, when you see it, it weakens your confidence. So as children of the Most High God, we can come before God boldly. God's yeah. word and him is the same. God's word cannot lie. When we pray to God, we don't pray to God our will. We pray God back to God his will. And God said his word shall not lie. He said the heaven and the earth will pass away before his word returns to him void. So God God to honor his word. And being children of the Most High God, we in a covenant. We in a covenant relationship with God. It's not a matter of, of if he do it, he got to do it. God's word cannot lie. His word is the truth. And right here she said, it says, And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And verse 30 says, And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that his virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Verse 31 said, His disciples said to him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and says, Thou who touched me. Verse 32, and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And said, and he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. So one thing about it, God, Jesus didn't heal her. She, she made herself whole. He said, thy faith has made the whole. And that's a lot of times in the situation that we're going through. The faith that we have in God, the trust that we have in God is going, is going to change our very situation. I know some of the things that I faced in my life didn't know how I was going to get out of it. I didn't have nothing, nobody to turn to but God. I don't have a plan B. If, my, if, if this Jesus ain't no work, I don't have nothing else to turn to. That's why it got to work. And that's why I got to make sure in my mind that I allow myself up with the things of God, that I do his will, that I don't compromise the word of God for nobody. As Christians, we cannot compromise the word of God. Whatever the Bible say wrong, we say wrong. Whatever the Bible say right, we say right. And we got to make sure that we are God pleases and not man pleases. A lot Amen. of times we try to do things to please man. And when we please the man, we disappoint God. And we please God and, and a lot of times in pleasing God, a lot of people not gonna understand. A lot of people a lot of people not gonna understand your walk. A lot of people not gonna understand the change, but they got to respect it. And one thing about it, this word is gonna what make what, what make us rich. This word is where we're gonna find our prosperity. Anything outside the word, you you gonna, you're gonna be missed. I don't care how much money you got or how successful you are, if you lack in the word of God you ain't got nothing. Amen. Amen. All right, go with me to Matthew. We're going to look at 14, verses 24 through 31. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 14, verses 24 through 31. When you get that, say amen. amen. It says, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves, 
for the wind was contrary. Verse 25, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. For straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid thee to come unto me. And Peter and Peter. He said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus. See, right now, a lot of times when, when, when we're going through our walk with Christ, we, we ask God for things. We say, God, bless us with this business. Bless us with this house. And God tells us that we can have it. God said, okay, I'm going to bless you with it. And then look at verse 30. It says, but when he saw the wind bolstering, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried with a loud he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thee little, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? See, right here, Peter walked on water. But the thing is, a lot of times in our life, when, 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 we, when we take the focus off Jesus and put the focus on our circumstances, the elements around us, it's going to cause us to sink. And a lot of times we be so afraid of failing that, that before we even step out on what God told us to do, we already defeated. And God tell you to do something. Don't you think he's going to equip you to do the task that he told you to do? A lot of times we be so afraid, well, God, I don't have the money. I don't have this. And we always wait on everything to be perfect. We'll never do nothing. I don't care what, and one thing about it, when Peter took his focus on Jesus, that's when he began to think. And that's just like us. When we take our focus on Jesus and we worry about the elements and the situation and the circumstances that's around us, we're going to think. Jesus got to be the center of our life. And if Jesus told him, that he said, Lord, if that's you, they need to come on to you. And the Lord said, come. Don't you yes. think the Lord was going to protect them? You yes. think the Lord bless them with this business. The Lord saying, go, I'm going to bless you with it. But you're Thank so you. afraid, worried about how I'm going to get the money to do this, how I'm going to get the money to do it. You shouldn't worry about the money. God's going to take care of that. It's not up to us to worry about how we're going to do it. When God says, go, you got to go. Anytime you're obedient to what God tells you to do, you might go one way, but you're going to come back another. That's why I like Isaiah 1 and 19. It says, if you're willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. When God tells you to do something, don't ask God how I'm going to do it. Just go. Yes. Just go. Just just be obedient. Because every time you're obedient, you'll go one way, but you'll come back another. You'll go sick. You'll come back healed. You'll go broke. You'll come back rich. Every blessing is tied to your being. You look through, all, through the Bible, all the great men and women in the Bible. Every time God sent them on an assignment, their obedience, after their obedience, he always follows a reward. We got to make sure that, that we're that we going to serve God regardless of what it looks like. We can't let the element dictate what we do. Just think, every successful millionaire, they didn't, they didn't find their niche the first go around. It took them six and seven times for them to, for them to find their niche. Just think, they'll quit them the third time. They would have never made. That's why we can't quit no matter how hard it is. We can't quit. As Christians, quit shouldn't be an option for us. Why? Because the greater one resides on the inside of us. We, we, we got the Holy Ghost that dwells on the inside of us. We got the secret weapon on the inside of us. The Bible says the earth is, is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So if we are children of the Most High God, the earth is ours too. That's just like us. As natural parents, we want to see our kids blessed. It's nothing that I would do for my kids that's in my power as long as they're doing right. And that's the same thing for God. Yes. God wants to be in abundance. He wants us blessed to be a blessing. God never going to bless us with just enough. He always going to bless us with more than enough so we can be a blessing to somebody else. But if your motive for wanting to be blessed is to be selfish, you're going to never be blessed. We should be, we, our main goal should want to be distribution centers for the kingdom of God. We should want to see how many people we can impact, how many people that we can help across the world. If it's about us, we're only going to be limited. we got to start thinking outside the box. We can't be small-minded. The devil